Welcome to the Prophets Chat. John and I so enjoy getting together and sharing the word that God has put on our hearts with you. And we thank you that you listen, that you tune in. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting us into your homes. Um, it means so much to us. And uh, I'm so excited to bring you uh, this word that I know the Lord has laid on my heart to bring to you today. It's a, it's, it's a powerful word, and I know that it's just going to transform our lives. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Lord doesn't want us to be deceived. In this coming year, this is a year where, you know, we've seen a lot of blind eyes or people with their eyesight being restored in church just sovereignly. So far, like six people, just with nobody praying for them, God healed their eyesight. And so it's a year where God is opening our eyes to the truth, and he does not want us to be deceived. The truth sets us free, okay? We have to have the truth. And where do we get the truth? We get the truth from him, from his word, for spending time with him, meditating on the word. He said to Joshua, when he released Joshua, Joshua had to take over from Moses. Now, they got to the promised land, and Joshua is given the assignment. Moses is gone. Now it's Joshua's job. Joshua has to take the people into the promised land. And the first thing that God tells him, he says, don't be afraid. Don't be worried about anything. He said, meditate on my word day and night, and you mm. will be successful in all you do. Oh, yeah. Ha. And I believe that this word that John wants to bring us today is God saying, do what I told Joshua. Meditate on my word. Spend time in my word and you will be successful. You won't be deceived or tricked. Right, right. And, you know, some of one of our other previous videos, we talked about how God was returning the voice to the prophet and that like never before we have seen the prophetic increase so powerfully. Uh, you can find it anywhere, all over YouTube, Rumble, wherever you go, you can find some type of, of a prophetic voice out there like never before. And I believe that, you know, God is doing that sovereignly. Yeah. But when God does something like that, the enemy always comes in and he tries to pervert it or ruin it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we have to be careful that what God is pouring out, it's, it's not to replace our time or your personal time with the Lord. And that's where the enemy will come in and lay a trap. And he'll say, um, just, you know, tune in and, and get words from um, different prophets or different things. And, and that's where you'll get all your information from me. But the Lord wants you and I to spend time in this, in the word of God. And that can't, you can't go about doing that. Amen. He wants us to be balanced. Okay. And if we get, it's like a picture a car and one of the tires is bigger than all the other three. What a mess driving down the road. Right. Okay. And that would be like us. Yes. We need all four tires. Right. Okay. But to be balanced so that we need the prophetic. We need the word of God. We need the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit. We need intimacy with Jesus. We need all those things, but we got to stay in balance. That's right. All right. And sometimes we can get a little bit out of balance without even realizing it, mm -hmm. focusing on one thing, and we're leaving the other things to one side. When there was a the move of the Holy Spirit back in the 90s, oh, we were just like, Loving it. It was wonderful. You know, sloshing around in the glory yeah, of God. It was so good. Oh, it was wonderful. But we had to stay in balance. We had to sp still spend time with the Lord, still spend time meditating on the word, reading the word. We have to stay in balance and not just have all our focus on one thing. That's right. So if you have a choice to make, if you are busy, busy one day and you're thinking, okay, what do I do? Do I watch this video of the prophet's chat or do I take time to read the word of God? Read the word of God. This vi these videos that we put together is dessert. <laughs> it's, it's in addition to what God is already telling you. So am I telling you not to run to us or, or any other prophet for your daily dose of God's word? Yes. I'm telling you, don't do that. Let this be something that 
I want to see your comments that say, the Lord spoke that same thing to me this morning. You don't know when I read those in your comment in your comments, how much that blesses my heart, because that's what this is meant to do. This is just meant to be an encouragement, just the whipped cream and the cherry on top. This isn't to replace your time with God in the word. This is to just encourage you to even get deeper into God's word, because there's a warning in here that I'm going to read to you that this is what's, this is the times that we're in. And this is the trick of the enemy that I'm going to lay out to you right now. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, you can read this on your own, in, starting in verse 1. The Spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. If you and I, if we know God's stance on all these things that are going on in the world, you will not be deceived by a doctrine of devils. Right. If you don't know what the Bible says about all these things that are going on in the world, you can pick any topic and find it in the word of God. Once you know that answer, don't move off of it. You know exactly what, and what God says about it is way more important than what any man or woman says about it. What does God say about marriage? Okay. Right. What does God say about purity yeah. and sexual immorality? Holiness. Holiness. What does God say about these things? What does the woke culture say? What does uh, the doctrine of men and, and demons, what are they promoting? We need to know the word of God. That's our standard. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what we measure everything by. And if we're not in the word, we can be tricked. We can say, well, that sounds okay. Everyone else is doing it. That's right. That's right. No, absolutely. And a prophetic word should always be confirmation, not information. And if it's something you've never heard before, go research it in the word of God yourself and make sure that it's there. It's so important before you digest something and you make it a part of your faith and you make it a part of your belief, you have to make sure that it is found in the word of God. If it's not, get rid of it because it's no good. Uh, the Bible goes on to say in verse 2, um, such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. And that's powerful. You know, sometimes just our consciences alone will know if something's good or not. We'll just sense that, hey, this is off, or this just doesn't feel right, or I'm, I'm getting a check in my spirit. If, if you're getting any of those, then go to the word of God and make sure that whatever it is that you're hearing or you're listening to, or even you're thinking your thoughts, because sometimes we can be deceived in our thoughts. Right. Well, maybe that's not that bad. Or maybe, you know, this whole thing that's coming under attack about marriage and children, the things that they're doing to our children, you know, maybe it's not that bad. No, it's bad. Yeah. And when we read the word of God, we understand it is under a vicious attack. Our children are under an attack like never before. Marriages are under an attack like never before. Identities are under an attack like never before. And <clears throat> you'll find all that in the word of God. Yeah. And that's why it's so important that we have to have personal time with the Lord every single day. You, it, it's a must have. A must have. And what God wants to do is, we just talked about this in a previous video about the Lord being the good shepherd this year, right. that he wants to shepherd his people. The only way a shepherd is allowed to be a shepherd in someone's life is for that person to understand and know the voice of the good shepherd. So in order for you and I to be led by God, we first need to know his voice and how we learn his voice is by reading his word because we'll know his tone. Yeah. We'll know if it's love. We'll know if it's um, acceptance. We'll know if it's found in the word of God. That's how God speaks to you and I is through his word. And when you have his word that is put inside of you every day, that's the well that the Lord draws from to give you encouraging words in your mind. Right. So if you don't have the seeds of the word of God planted in your life, then there's no garden from the Lord to pick from. 
So when you're driving down the road and the enemy throws a nasty thought in your mind, where it, what is inside of you that's going to come against that word that you say, no, the Lord says that if he is for me, who shall be against me? These scriptures need to be embedded inside of us like a garden, like good fruit of a garden that the Holy Spirit can go and pull that fruit. And, and that's how you go, go combat the enemy when he's coming after your life. And that's how the good shepherd is allowed to be the good shepherd in your life is because you and I know his voice and we know his words. We know when he's leading us. We know when he's telling us, be careful. We know when he's telling us to run and he knows when he's telling us to stay. And, and it's so important to make sure that with all that's going to be happening, there's, there's healings taking place. There's outpourings of his spirit that's taking place. There's prodigals getting saved there. I mean, it's A to Z what we're seeing happen in the church. People with um, that have never prophesied prophesying. It's so exciting, but it's not to replace the word of God or anything. The Lord always does things in balance. So it, as he ramps up one, the other needs to ramp up to keep in pace. So as the <laughs> yeah. Lord pours, pours, let's say we start here and the Lord pours out a revival. Well, now he's, he is upping and he's pouring out. Our job is to match that intensity with our time spent with him. So we remain balanced. That's right. The prophetic, we can see the prophetic is right. God's using the prophetic in this hour. We're not discounting that. We're part of it. Oh, absolutely. That he's speaking through the prophets, through those with the prophetic voice to encourage people, to build up their faith, to bring, give people direction from him that they're hearing from him. And so that's that one, say the tire, one of the tires that's being enlarged. Well, we've got to then, like you said, balance it with the word of God, spend time in the word of God every day. Mm -hmm. And what I do too, because one of the other things we want to do is continue to build up our relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. He's the author yeah. of the Bible. So a trick I have when I sit down to pray every day, I get with the Holy Spirit and I say, Holy Spirit, please anoint the word and speak to me through your word. And I also say this, I say, in the name of Jesus, I bind all demon spirits. I say, no demon spirit can use the word of God to try to trick me or whatever. Only the Holy Spirit can use the word of God. Because we see when uh, Jesus was being tempted by the devil, okay, before he went, in, when he went into the desert, he mm -hmm. was being tempted there. And what did the devil use? He used the word of God. He came at him with the word of God. So we need to say, Holy Spirit, please use your word. So we're, we keep things, if we're just only in the word and not with the Holy Spirit, not listening to the prophets, not spending time with Jesus, if we're not doing those things, we can get out of balance in that way too. That's right. So we have to meditate on the word with the Holy Spirit, okay? And let the Holy Spirit ignite those words. So that what I do is when the Holy Spirit's, I'm reading the word, all of a sudden, something will really hit my heart. And I know that word was for me. I get my highlighter, I underline it, you see my Bible. <laughs> it's all mocked up. <laughs> so I can find it easy when I want to go back and look at it. <laughs> you know, because the Holy Spirit breathes on the word. Whoa! Right. And brings life to it. Okay? So what we've seen in the past We've seen some movements where all the word, the word, the word, and people got out of balance with that. Just law and legalism. Right. We, okay. We're not saying that. We're saying the prophetic has increased. The moving of the Holy Spirit has increased. We can't say, well, I don't need to get into the word because I'm hearing all from over here. No, we need to keep our time meditating on the word. Like I told Joshua, meditate on my word day and night. Spend time in the word every single day. It doesn't have to be hours reading the word. It can be 10, 15 minutes, whatever the Holy Spirit leads you. But say, Holy Spirit, please speak to me through your word. Ignite this word. Let him guide you to where he wants you reading in the Bible. He, one day you might feel like I need to read James. Yeah. Okay. Another day you might feel like I, I need to read some of the Psalms. Wherever the Holy Spirit leads you, you go and let the Holy Spirit Ignite the word that it comes alive. And because the word, what is the word is Jesus. In the beginning was the word. 
The word was with God and the word was God. So we're having literally an encounter with Jesus as we're meditating on the word, the bread of life, filling ourselves and nourishing ourselves. We're not saying don't ignore all those other things. We're saying we're sensing that we're spending so much of our attention and focus on these other things that we could be be neglecting the word of God and that that would be damaging to us spiritually and also to our families. Right. And pick a translation that's that's easy for you to understand that you like. Don't get caught up in legalism that it has to be a certain version of the Bible. If you choose whatever version you pick, that's great. If, if it speaks to you and you can understand it freely, that's great. I know for me, um, I started out with the King James and sometimes it's difficult to understand a lot of the King James lingo. And so, you know, I felt um, trapped for a while that, you know, that was a version that I was expected to read. Um, you know what, but I just let the Lord lead me into different translations, the NIV and the, the Living Bible, whatever it might be. And you can cross-reference and look if, if you're not sure if a meaning's been changed, but pick something that is is easy to digest, Yeah, that's easy for you to understand. Because the enemy always looks to steal, kill, and destroy. And if we're not careful, what God is intending for good with this almost like prophetic movement that's happening, that's really being poured out, that it can turn in, into some people, it can turn into like a Christian horoscope where people can be just relying on a prophet to just feed them every day. Give me a word, give me a word, give me a word. And that's not the job of a prophet to do that because that's taking place of, of what God wants to do. God's desire in everything he does, whether it's um, before a revival, during a revival, and after an outpouring of his spirit, his main goal is to just get closer to you and I. Yeah, That's yeah. his goal. He'll never do anything to take us further away. And that's why we have to really be careful and we have to understand that the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy anything good that God does. So let this, what's happening with the prophets and with the outpouring of the Spirit, let it be great because we're understanding God's saying to us through all this, I love you. And I want to spend time with you. That's what he's saying. Yeah. And when uh, John and I were kind of di discussing what we were going to talk about on this vi video uh, earlier, I remembered how when the kids were growing up, this was many years ago. <laughs> I was little. <laughs> <laughs> and every night at dinner, uh, we would say grace. And each one of the children was assigned uh, the task of, their turn to read the Bible. So um, at, at dinner, we would say our grace for God to bless the meal and whatnot. And we didn't have an, a rote prayer. We would just pray whatever the Lord let us. And then that specific child whose turn it was would read a portion of scripture. And then we would sit and discuss during our meal what we got from that scripture. What it, mm -hmm. it, So, uh, you know, that was your training. <laughs> <laughs> And the plays that we did. I had to memorize the whole New Testament. For <laughs> Pretty <plays>. good. <laughs> so I, I'm just encouraging parents because, you know, we see that the enemy is trying to brainwash our children. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, he uses words and he's trying to use his words to bring lies and deception to the children. We need to use the word of God. Amen. All right. And get our children familiar with the word of God. It didn't hurt our kids. They loved it. They did. I'd say, OK, don't forget tonight's your turn to read before. Get a scripture before we sit down to eat. And they go find a scripture, and it's, you know, from when they could start reading. And so uh, get, like he said, an easy, understandable version of the Bible for them. Maybe some large print, whatever. And yeah. And let them take part in this. Have Little, you could do it your way. We did it at dinner time. You could have a little time where you all gather together as a family and read the Bible a little bit together and talk about it. Let the Bible become important once again yeah. in our homes. Yeah. It's the foundation. It's the truth that God gave us this manual, his word, you know, for us to use. And we can't let this whole generation grow up without that foundation, without the word of God, without being groomed in the word of God. 
where it, they in, they'll get to love the word of God. That's right. And there's so many distractions that can pull us from that because our devices have the answer at our fingertips. Yeah. We can pick up our phones and find yeah. anything at any time. And it just takes away from that intimate time with the Lord. And I'm sure, you know, we you can find it on your phone. You can ask Siri, but there's nothing like holding just a good paperback <laughs> yeah. Bible and just the words they jump off the page when it's a God word for you. And this is what I'm telling you is going to happen. God's going to speak to you like never before. And you're not going to be looking so much for someone else to give you that word because you're going to get it directly from God. And then when someone happens to give you a word, when God brings them your way and they prophesy over you or you watch a video, it's going to be something that you've already heard from God. So it ignites it again. So you get double blessed because you're blown away yeah. that God just spoke this word to you. You could be watching this video right now. And the Lord may have said to you for a New Year's resolution, you need to spend more time in my word. Boom. Boom. Uh, now, <laughs> this is God blessing you twice. Because not only did you hear from him the first time, but now you're hearing from him again. Yeah. And he's, he's trying to bring you to this place where he talks to you personally. And he shares things with you personally. And things going on in your life, you open scripture and you're blown away because he's talking to you about a relationship. Mm -hmm. He's talking to you about your job. He's talking to you about your finances. I'm telling you, this can be every single day. Yeah. And this is how good God is. Trust me, he talks to us every single day out of his word, out of sometimes driving in my truck, the word that is already inside of me, all of a sudden a verse just comes right to my mind. The devil's not going to have a Bible verse come to your mind. <laughs> All of us that encourages you. All of a sudden, a Bible verse just jumps in my mind. And I'm, I'm so blessed because I know that it was the Holy Spirit who brought me a timely word and what I needed right there and then. And that's, that's what we gain by ingesting God's word. It's not only the knowledge of who he is. So when the devil comes and tries to say that he's not the good shepherd, He's after you. He's out to get you. You're living under a curse. No, you have to have the word of God in you to be able to fight those things off, to be able to fight that word off from the enemy. Without it, we're left powerless. Yeah, I, I still keep feeling that um, it's really important to the Lord that we start uh, introducing or reintroducing uh, the Bible and scripture uh, in our families to our children and our grandchildren mm. that uh, it's, I just, it just, that feeling just won't leave my heart. I, I can remember uh, when our kids were growing up that they, they were little and I would, uh, I bought them a picture Bible and it was. Oh, it, I love that. Yeah. Do you remember that? I love that thing. It had all illustrated pictures. I still remember it now. <laughs> you know, uh, It's like a comic book, but it's a Bible. And it's all made like a comic Absolutely book. Absolutely loved it. I still remember it now. Yeah. And and so what does that do? It, it brings scripture down to the level of the child where the child can picture it and enjoy it and love it. And and it be, now look at John. He, he's a man of the word. Absolutely. <laughs> and so that's one of the keys that God gave me to use to raise our children to love the word and to get in mm. the word was it's, it looks like, I don't know if they still have them. I, I'm sure they probably do, but it was a picture Bible, it was called. And it had all, from beginning to end, the Bible all in, looks like comic book. Yeah. Hard to cover. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so they could read and see the picture, see what God was saying and get an understanding. And we read it together sometimes, but I just go in their room and find them in their room reading their picture Bible. And, and, it, and I, I just know God's saying, I want you as parents and grandparents, grandparents, you can get a picture Bible or whatever, something that's age appropriate for your grandchildren and have these books in the house that when the children come over, want grandma to read you a story or grandpa to read you. And they'll love sitting on your lap and you read them a Bible story. And just get them into the word of God mm -hmm. and loving the word of God and loving God. As a result, the word reveals Jesus to them right. and it causes them to love Jesus. Right. And, you know, that will 
that will make whatever the Lord is going to do last forever. Yeah. If, if we're unbalanced and we, you know, we're so caught up in what God is doing and what God is saying and the different voices he's saying it from, that's not going to be a momentary thing. And all of a sudden, when that well runs dry or that individual is no longer putting forth those words, because let's face it, at some point, all good things come to an end. What do we do? We're, we're left with nothing. And the move that God had started and started to create, it, it fizzles out because there's no longevity to it. But if we, if we understand the times that we're in and we realize that if the day of evil has intensified, then so hasn't the kingdom of God. <laughs> and he is way more powerful. And what is more powerful than having scripture in our lives to be able to combat these lies, the lies that are being put forth are unbelievable. And the only way to go after a lie, we can't complain about it. We can't shake our head and say, this is horrible, is to, is to have the word of God stand up against it. And then that lie falls. And when we have the word in our lives, those lies mean nothing. They don't penetrate. We hear it and we say, wow, that's the devil. That's as far as it goes because the word acts as a shield mm -hmm. and protects us, protects our minds from being infiltrated in all this doctrine and everything happened. You're, you're already protected when you have the word of God surrounding you. So it's so important. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's a foundation mm. too that we need to build that foundation in our hearts. Okay. For everything that God is building. When you build a house, you want to build a good, strong foundation for the house. So then no matter what comes against it, that house will stand. And in scripture, we hear Jesus taught about a house that was built on a good, strong foundation is likened to somebody who hears the word of God mm -hmm. and obeys it. That's right. So when the wind blows, that house stands strong. And when a storm rises, it's not taken down. But a house that's built on sand is a house that's not built on the word of God. And people aren't hearing the word and not obeying the word. And when a storm comes, oh, what a mess. The whole thing is destroyed. Mm. And so the word of God is part of that foundation that God wants to build in all of our lives that no matter what comes, we hang on to the word. I've got the word of God. And what God's been leading us to do lately on Friday nights at our prayer meeting, who, ha, huh, is he has us, we're there like two, two and a half hours praying, declaring the word of God, decreeing what God is saying. It might be an actual scripture that somebody proclaims, a, a, a prophetic word that God has spoken, but we're declaring the word, decreeing the word of God. Because as we declare the word of God, Scripture tells us his angels perform the words right. that we speak that are the word of God. So as his word goes forth, it never returns void. And God releases his angels to perform the word. So we need to be filled with the word of God. Mm -hmm. So then, like you said, when something happens, it bubbles up. The Holy Spirit brings it right to our remembrance. Right. Boom, we declare that word. Right. But if we haven't put it in there, it's like a computer. If you don't put all the information in you can't get anything out of the computer. It's the same way with us. We need to read the word, meditate on the word, then it's in us. And what does God promise? He promised Joshua, if you do that, you will be successful in all you do. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. It's God's promise. And we, we can't neglect the word of God. Uh, you know, years ago, you know, before we had all this technology and all the distractions we had going on now in the world, we could, uh, families would spend time around the table reading the word of God. You would see people sitting. I can remember visiting my grandmother years ago. I'm old. So think how many years ago that was. And she'd be sitting in her rocking chair reading her Bible during the day. You know, and so we're not seeing that as much anymore because we have so many distractions. And that's what the enemy uses to pull us away from the things that are important. That's where I get it from. I love sitting outside on my front porch. My wife and I make a pot of coffee, Bibles, and sit in two rocking chairs. Oh, really? That's our favorite thing to do. That's where I get it from. <laughs> Your grandmother. <laughs> I'm telling you. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And, you know, and we want to pass that on Yeah. to this generation. 
You know, I, I know the Lord told me years ago that there was going to be a great revival that was going to break out among the young generation. Wow. And so I know it's going to happen. I have no doubt. I, I was just listening to Dutch Sheets talking about this. I think it was today or yesterday saying that, that God spoke that to him too. And so we want to be part of that. We don't, you know, what's the enemy trying to do? Stop that from happening. Right. Get the children so wrapped up and caught up in the things of the world that they won't be able to hear what God is saying or be used by God. But God's determined that these, that his will will be done, that a great revival is going to break out and the children are going to be used mightily in this revival. We're seeing it happen at church. Mm. Uh, God is using the children. I have the children, some of the children around the prayer team, and they're going around praying for people, and miracles are happening. But people are getting healed. So God wants to use the children. The children are up front with their flags, and they're worshiping, <laughs> and they're just loving Jesus, and they're just falling in love with Jesus. And they'll come and get the microphone, some of them, and testify of prayers they prayed, how God's answering those prayers. And these children are at home reading their Bibles. The yeah. father told me, my sons, I went in his room, he was sitting reading his Bible. Oh. So God is doing this. We want to cooperate with what God is doing in this hour. And, uh, you know, our kids aren't going to do something they don't see us do. We can say, read your Bible, but they never see us reading it. Right. They're not going to do it. Right. But if, like I see my grandmother do it. It impressed me. I'm still remembering it wow. all these years later. Wow. So as we, our children see us reading the word, spending time with God, they will say, that's it. I want to do that too. And when yeah. you say, come on, let's read the word together. Come on, let's see what God's saying to us today. Yeah. And just pull them into that because the devil is viciously, like you said mm -hmm. earlier, viciously attacking the children, the younger mm -hmm. generation. We've got to recognize and get on the offensive, not just constantly be on the defense, exactly. mopping up the mess he made. Right. Come on, let's get on the offense. Yeah. Huh? And get our children on fire for God. This is his last ditch effort. I'm telling you, this is the enemy's final card yeah. in his hand. And he will be defeated and we will win. And I can't wait to just see what God is going to do in your life. Yeah. You take this truth, you apply it to your life. I'm telling you, God will use you so powerfully to go after the enemy in what he's doing in your realm and in your life and people that are surrounded, that you're surrounded with, that you love. I'm telling you, God is going to equip you so powerfully with his word because the enemy, that's the one thing that the enemy cannot divert or the enemy cannot uh, you know, skirt around. It's the word of God. And the thing is, is that, you know, God does not want us to be deceived. He wants mm. us filled with the truth. And that as we meditate on the word and get the word of God in us, we won't be deceived. Exactly. And we want the same thing for our children, our grandchildren, that they will go through life not being deceived. We're seeing a lot of deception in the world. And that's a huge problem that we've been dealing with over these last years is that deception is just running rampant. Right. And so God says, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived in this hour. Meditate on my word. Know the truth. Ho, ho, ho. Right. The truth will set you free. And then speak the truth. Release the truth. Pray the truth. Declare the truth. Oh, use yeah. the truth as a sword in your life and be powerful and mighty. Yeah, amen. And I believe that you're feeling this for the children because when you were just saying that, I thought of this all started when they removed Bibles and prayer from schools. So the enemy had a plan. And yes. now the Lord was impressing on you to have the children because that's the only thing that's going to combat that. Yeah. Oh, I that's the only thing that's going to fight that, that's going to pull that rug right out from under his feet yeah. in his plan. Yeah. Because they're passionate. Yeah. This next generation, they are passionate. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that we might not be able to get laws passed that get prayer back in school. We're hoping that that will happen right. and we're believing it will. But no one can stop us exactly. from having prayer in our homes. So from even having, you can have the neighborhood kids come over and say, come on, kids. I have a Bible Let, study. Yeah. I'm going to teach you today about Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> 
you'll okay. never go fishing in a boat again, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, and, and the kids will love it. Yeah. And you can have little snacks for them. We, we can say, Holy Spirit, show me your strategy to get prayer, the Bible, scripture, your love, your presence into my children's lives, mm -hmm. into the neighborhood children's lives. How can we want to get prayer back in the schools? The enemy went after the kids in this younger generation. Now, what do you want to do to get them back in? That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling it. Some of you guys are getting some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Yes. <laughs> Go for it. And you know what? You've been created for a time such as this. So if the Lord's just giving you an idea, don't let anything stop you. Don't let anyone hold you back. Go for it. God's going to anoint you to do it. And I think that God's using John today <laughs> as an example yeah. that if you do that, you're going to be raising men of God and women of God. Because it works. Yeah. It's like gravity. If you throw something up, it's going to come back down. Yeah. It works. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. It works. And this principle works. Yeah. It does not return void. It's guaranteed. Yeah. I, I want to pray for for you uh, to get a love for the word of God, but also to pass that love on to your loved ones. Mm. All right. So father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much, Holy spirit, that you come alongside us. You live within us and you guide us step by step. I pray that you fill every single one of us yes. with a great, great love for your word, but for a hunger for your word that you yes. anoint the word every time we read it. Oh, yes. that we hear you speak directly to us. Like we're reading a love letter from mm -hmm. you, Jesus, from you, Father. Oh, mm -hmm. ah, as we meditate and read in the word. I pray you give us wisdom. You give us counsel. You give us clear direction for our lives when we read the word, that we know which way we're supposed to go. We mm -hmm. hear you so clearly. And I pray you give us the grace to pass that love for your word on to the younger generations behind us in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen to everything you just prayed. And I pray that the battle strategies that we're looking for to go after the enemy from what he's doing in our lives, I pray we find it within these pages. I pray, Lord, that you let the words jump off the page. I pray, Lord, that this outpouring of your spirit that you have only just begun will not be quenched, will not be stopped, and will not be unbalanced. But that, Lord, you're going to cause there to be such a love for your word that this, what you have started, is only going to explode to be even bigger. So that which the enemy sought to kill, steal, and destroy, you're going to turn around, Lord, and you're going to cause it to blow up like an atomic bomb. And, Lord, this is going to spread as far as the north, south, east, and west, and that your word is going to be declared and proclaimed, and that, Lord, every every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for this timely word, and I pray, Father, that as we get into your word, Lord, that you show us more revelations that we than we can ever imagine, that we've ever known, that we've ever seen. And I also pray that your voice becomes so clear in our ears, that there's no one that says, I am not able to hear God's voice. I pray, Lord, that you speak to everyone so clearly, so loud through your word, that that sentence is never uttered again. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know what I saw Amen. when you were praying? I saw people picking up a Bible and blowing the dust off. It. You know what I saw earlier? <laughs> I, I heard the Lord say, no more coffee rings on my word. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So some of yeah, so your end tables have a Bible that is used for a coffee cup. Eh, no more coffee <laughs> rings on God's word. Yeah, th this this word is such a and a word that the Holy Spirit we weren't planning on talking really about the children. It's the Holy Spirit just breathed on this word. Yes. <laughs> and he's igniting it in your hearts. And you are going to put it into practice because the Holy Spirit's wonderful. Absolutely. He's faithful. He's going to help us to do that. All of us. So good. <laughs> I know. God is good. So good. He's good. Um, just would you want to tell everyone how they can reach you? Yes. I'm going to be doing a series on faith on my YouTube channel in the next couple of weeks. 
So I encourage you to go check that out. It's at on YouTube. You can find me at John Rigney Ministries. And then online, there's a link online on our website to the YouTube channel as well. And that's at johnrigneyministries.com. Amen. And uh, I'm just going to give us a couple of announcements. Uh, February 24th, 25th, and 26th, John's going to be at the church. And, <laughs> and Miles Kilby and myself, the three of us, we're going to have a prophet's gathering, a prophetic gathering. And it's going to be Friday night, starting at 6 o'clock. Saturday afternoon at one o'clock and Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Miles Kilby will be preaching Sunday morning. Um, Saturday afternoon, the three of us will each take a turn and preach. And we're all going to be ministering over everybody there. This, so that people get a personal word, get prayer for whatever you need. Uh, also on Friday night, we're going to do uh, our regular prayer time. But then at the end of it, we're going to have a prophet's chat like we do here but with Miles. Ooh, that's going to be so much fun. <laughs> Sharing what God has put on our heart to share with you, those mm -hmm. that come. So you're all welcome to come. It's at the Church on the Rock. Uh, all the details are on my website, donnarigney.org. And mm -hmm. also one other thing we've got coming up, which is a ways away in September, September 24th to October 1st, uh, Heavenly Cruises. I'm going to be doing a cruise with Manuel Johnson, uh, for Heavenly Cruises. They have a phone number there. If you go to our website, you can get the information if you want to sign up for that. And it's going to be all about the glory of God. And Steve Swanson is going to be doing the worship. So it'll be a, a wonderful, wonderful time. Yeah. Awesome. Also, I have my uh, two prophetic books uh, on my website, um, The Glory of God Revealed and Divine Encounters in a three CD set on soaking in the glory. If you want to encounter the glory, if you want to know, get deeper into your relationship with the Lord, both these books in the CD set will help you. So mm -hmm. they're on there. <laughs> Amen. That's this awesome. was fun, huh? Yeah, this well, was great. This was great. We will see you again on our next Prophets Chat. And be mighty, be strong, be in the word, <laughs> be balanced. That's right. Amen. And don't be deceived. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Be blessed. We'll see yes. you soon. Amen.